Hi, I'm Joshua Finn from J and H Aerospace. Welcome to the build video for the J and H Aerospace Tech Flyer 2022. This is our latest airplane for Technology Student Association high school flight events, and it features a carbon fiber tail boom, which is removable. It features a removable wing. and even removable landing gear. So it fits neatly in a box for storage. Uh, we've not sacrificed any performance uh, getting you that type of an arrangement. The airplane's very easy to build. All of the ribs slot in place into the wing spars, both wing and tail. It has a, an aluminum bearing for the propeller assembly which allows you to quickly change out the uh, propeller shaft um, and propellers you know, in the field and thereby make uh, propeller changes depending on what flying sites you're in. Um, it has a very nice clearance for your rubber motor so it doesn't bunch up. In general, very easy airplane to work with, easy to build, easy to fly. Um, the, the wing support structures are uh, as few pieces as you can possibly get away with. So everything self-aligns, self-jigs, and you get a very nice uh, build process. So, having explained all of that, and the fact that it flies well, and this airplane is part of a series which has won very successfully across the country, and even at the TSA Nationals, let's get started with the build process. Alright, so you're going to need some tools to assemble your rubber-powered airplane. Uh, the first is, this is parchment paper. You're going to use this as a work surface, a non-stick work surface for your build. We'll talk about adhesives. Uh, Super 77 by 3M. We have this on our website. This is what the ideal and best material to use to attach your covering to the airplane. Um, you're going to want some sort of super glue um, and not store-bought typical super glue in the little bitty tubes. Uh, this is Gorilla brand super glue in a bottle. You want a bottle. The stuff that comes in the little tubes is impossible to use for this task. Uh, we carry uh, Gorilla glue, but we also carry uh, Bob Smith glue, a variety of Bob Smith glues on our website. I recommend the medium uh, viscosity glue. Um, this is this Gorilla glue is the, uh, is medium, and then there's a Bob Smith medium that works as well. Um, this is CA Accelerator. You use it to make your uh, your adhesive harden more quickly, your super glue. Uh, and this is also Bob Smith brand and we carry it. You'll need some sort of petroleum jelly or Vaseline to attach the covering to the covering frame so that you can reposition it as you're adjusting your covering. Um, a few tools that I recommend having. Uh, a set of wire cutters like these and needle nose pliers and a single edge razor blade. Um, this razor blade works well to cut the covering but for the stinger you'll want um, if possible a cautery like this one, IndoorFFSupply.com uh, has uh, this um, device. It's a, um, it is an electric cautery, so if I press this uh, button, eventually that ends up red hot. I don't know if that shows up how uh, glowing red that is, but it's kind of warm at the moment. And I'm going to let off of it so before I burn out my battery. So, let's look at the contents of your kit for your tech flyer. Now, as you're doing this, remember there are parts for up to uh, three models in here. So, you want to make sure that you keep all of these parts together and maintain uh, some control of them. Don't take anything out of a part sheet that you're not going to use right now. So you, so you want to, that way everything stays together and you don't have a mess and you can come back and build your subsequent airplanes. There are some documentation notes in here including parts list, a photographic version of the parts list, and most importantly 
this drawing. Now, uh, you can contact us and I can get you a CAD version of this. Uh, without the notes on it, you'll have to put your own notes on there, but that'll be useful for your documentation packet for judging at competition. Uh, remember, 50% of your score should you make um, uh, the higher levels of the flights. I think it's the half, the top half of uh, the flight scores are going to end up getting judged for their documentation packet. So you want to pay close attention to that. And like I said, we can supply those uh, CAD documents uh, should you uh, desire them. So we'll slide these bags free. We'll talk about those in a minute. So you're going to have three propellers. Um, the propellers in, in most kits are going to be larger than this. Currently we don't have the full size props available so we're using these. Uh, the larger propellers are designed to be cut down to the uh, desired limit. Uh, we cut them down to about six, point, uh, six and five eighths inch diameter uh, which seems to work well. You will have three of these carbon fiber rods do not confuse these with wire. They are not wire, they are carbon fiber. And like I said, you'll have three of them. You will have a piece of actual wire. This is 020 piano wire. This is used for your rear hooks, for your rubber motors, as well as the wheel axles. You'll have two 18 inch long 332nd square sticks. These are used for making your landing gear. Now you're going to have some very heavy sticks here. These sticks are not used for building the airplane. They are for making a covering frame so that you can get a neat covering job on your airplane. And you'll have two short ones and two long ones. There will be three of these fairly heavy gauge balsa sheets here. These are your motor sticks as well as the wing saddle that goes uh, that fits the wing assembly to the fuselage. Next you're going to have this plywood part and these are the wing uprights that the wings mount to to mount into the saddle to get your proper wing positioning. There will be two of these very thin balsa sheets here. Handle these with care. These are the wing tips for your tech flyer. If I can get them apart. So you have enough of these to build out up to uh, three aircraft, three sets of wings, um, plus your tail, uh, tail rudders as well. Um, and so either way, you're going to use up all of these. This sheet you need to handle very carefully because if you grab it this way, you will break it. So you want to grab it by the ends. I want to look this over. This sheet contains wing ribs, it contains stab ribs, it contains stab spars, it contains wing spars, gussets for your landing gear, and wheels for your landing gear. This is actually what it looks like. It is a garbage bag. This is used for the covering for your airplane. It's very uh, very thin plastic and it works well. You're going to have a bag of rubber for making your rubber motors. You're going to have a hunk of clay for ballasting the airplanes and for balancing them. This is your hardware packet. Be very careful opening this. There are a lot of parts in it and you need to pay very close attention that you do not lose them. These are not, in general, parts that you can just replace by going to the hardware store. So if you lose them, um, I may be your only source for them and that's the last thing you want to find out the night before a contest. Obviously you shouldn't be building this airplane the night before a contest, but either way, if you start losing parts, you're going to be in a time crunch that you don't want. This piece of string is what's called spider wire. It's a very thin type of fishing line. You use this for binding uh, your nose bearing, rear hook, and the tail boom mount into place on the airplane. 
And I have a whole bunch of little dental rubber bands. These are used for holding the wing mount, wing, uh, sorry, the wing saddle onto the airplane. Then you're going to have these larger, kind of whitish things that look like washers because that is exactly what they are. Those are O-rings for your rubber motor. Now, I've got several of these floating around. You'll see these very tiny little washers. Here's one. These are easy to lose, so keep them in the bag because they are Teflon washers that make your propeller work well. You'll have three of these aluminum bearings. These are used for your propeller assembly. These you must guard very closely because you cannot get replacements from them very easily, except through me. So you need to make sure these go back in the bag where they belong. Uh, this is a piece of aluminum tubing. This is used for making your wheel axles for your landing gear. This is a piece of polyamide tubing. The piece in your kit will be longer than this. This is just a test piece that I have here. This is also something you need to be very careful with because you cannot readily replace it and it makes it possible to take the tail off of your airplane so that you can fit it in a competition legal flight box, which you are, which you are required to have. You will have three wire propeller shafts used for your propeller. So we'll stick those back in the box. And that completes the parts inventory for this airplane. All right, so to get started, let's pop open a single edge razor blade. And we are going to remove one set of wing spars. And do not cut out all the parts, only cut out what you need at the time. And sometimes you'll have a piece like this one. There's a couple spots that didn't cut all the way through. And don't just rip it out of there. Go back and just carefully cut through those spots. Now the next thing you're going to do is pop out a set of ribs. I have two complete sets of ribs. We're going to drop out just one of them. Now it's important to notice. Um, we'll go ahead and we can go ahead and pop the two spars apart. And we'll want them facing the little notch parts towards each other. In this stack of ribs, the rib at the bottom is shorter than all the others. Let's go ahead and take that rib now, and we're going to glue it in place. First, I'm going to test fit, and it is fitting in the slots. Sometimes this wood will end up a little bit thick, so you'll have to pinch it at the ends. Don't force it in the slot. Pinch it if you need to, um, because balsa wood does compress, and then it'll slide right in there. So I'm gluing on the end all the way around and just use a little bit of glue just dab some on each side and the end the top and bottom no glue does not benefit you because it won't be touching anything on the uh, spars and now we're going to slide this part together now it's important to try to keep these squared up and if it becomes an issue you could actually bring something in here as a gauge that yes that's square and not 
say skewed off to the side like that because now you're ha going to have a crooked wing so if you slide back together you can check over here as well and with that oops, sorry that's in front of the camera um, with that all stuck together dab some glue up or some yeah some accelerator now at this point I like to go ahead and start framing in the exterior of the wing so I'm gonna glue in the end ribs so glue on a side and an end side and an end and turn it around so the glue that's on the side is facing into those little notches If you have a little burr that's sticking up, you can break it off or sand it off or what have you. Would do the same thing on the other side. And this one has a little bit of a burr as well. I should have taken that off before I put glue on there. And you'll notice you have one extra rib. And that is in case you break one, because there's a good chance you might. Now, it is important that you slide the ribs all the way into the slots, because if you don't, the spars will be farther apart, and your wing will become illegal because its cord, which is this distance, will be too large. Now, when you are squeezing something, don't squeeze like this or you'll break the rib. Or what a lot of people like to do like that. You're going to want to put a thumb right here and grab up as close together as possible. Anything you're doing on an airplane, you want to grab as close to the two contact points as you possibly can. And there is your completed wing frame. Next, let's move to the horizontal tail. So you have two sets of horizontal tail spars. Again, as before, break out only one set. Now the wood sizes on this part are much smaller because it's at the back. So its flight loads are lower. It's also a place that you don't want excess weight on your airplane. So it is, as a result, much more fragile. So take your time in removing your horizontal stab spars.
again notches towards each other and then we're going to pop out one set of ribs we'll have some extra ribs in here Now all of the ribs in your stab are the same size. So it doesn't matter um, which one you use or anything like that. Now the stab ribs are in fact curved. So if you look at them end on, you can see there's a little bit of curvature here. They look almost flat. They're very slightly curved. We're going to repeat our procedure before that we did with the wing where we glue in that center rib and kind of use it to line everything else up. And again remember these parts are very fragile so we want to take our time and be gentle on them. Now these stab ribs seem a little bit thick, so I'm going to start pinching the ends on some of these. And then lastly, glue in the chip ribs. You could glue in the chip ribs before gluing these in, but that's what I decided to do this time. And now, the horizontal tail frame. These components here form your covering frame. So these long sticks are 18 inches long, and if you look at one of your wings, it's not a whole lot shorter than that, so you don't have a lot of room to play with. You're going to want to glue these shorter sticks to the ends. Very important that you do that. And get this as square as you can. Again, little tricks like this you can use to make sure everything's squared up. because my piece of parchment paper is not quite big enough. All right, so this is what your covering frame is going to look like. All right, so take your petroleum jelly, and we're going to 
use a paper towel so that we can rub petroleum jelly on this and put it on fairly thickly so I usually have a, a lot of excess Now, with this done, your um, frame is slimy on one side, so you're going to want to set this aside in such a way that it's not going to get that all over anything. Okay, so let's take our covering out. And as I have mentioned, this is a veggie bag. So, you can use scissors or razor blade to cut the end off. You can additionally use some cutting instrument to make a slit the full length. So this now opens up into a big sheet of covering. Now, we can kind of pull our covering frame into play here to get an idea how big of a piece we need. Cut this oversized, though. Now, got a bunch of excess here? Do not throw this away because you will use it again for your second airplane. Now, take this piece of covering, and right now you're thinking, I'm going to smooth this out. Instead, you're going to wad it up. I'm serious, you're going to wad it up like it's a ball of trash. Make it as small of a little ball as you possibly can. Unfold. Stretch it out. And then we're going to do the same thing again. This allows you to get a slightly wrinkled surface to the film. In terms of what the air sees, it's still going to see smooth film, but this allows the film to have a certain springiness to it, so that it is easier to get the film to stretch out nice and tight on your airplane, without being so tight that it distorts the flying surfaces. Now this veggie bag film is thick enough that it's not going to lay down perfectly flat.
sticky side down, by the way. The sticky side has to stick to the covering. Now this film is not perfectly tight at this point. You can flip the film over. You can start to stretch it tight. It is more important for the film to be tight in this direction than it is this direction. We will take out some of the slack here, but we're going to concentrate on that direction. Because that is what forces the film to adhere to your airfoil shape on your wings. And at this point, I would suggest. At this point, I would suggest going around with razor blade and trim off some of the excess. Maybe. That just makes the film a little easier to maneuver. And be careful that you don't do what I did, which was to loosen the film back up in the process. And now we'll set the film carefully aside for now. Stand it upright or something so that it is not uh, up against anything. Okay, so we've got our uh, wing and stab frame and we have the 3M Super 77. You'll notice we're outdoors. This stuff you use outside, you don't use it inside because it sticks to everything. Now I'm going to set one of my flying surfaces down. And we want to spray, so if the wind is coming from that direction, we want to spray so that the film, the uh, spray is going to go back on this frame. So we're going to spray along the spars. We want to make sure we get a heavy coat on the spars and the tip ribs. And by heavy coat, I mean you can just see a, a little bit of a film on there. You don't want to just completely lather it up because that's useless weight. And then we'll just squirt a little on each of the intermediary ribs. And we're going to stick this up against a surface like that so it doesn't stick because if it falls over it's going to get stuck. Same with the stab, the spars, tip ribs. And then light squirting on the intermediate ribs and you're good to go. Alright, so we're going to set our flying surfaces down on the table. And notice sticky side is up. So if I touch it on this side it comes up with my hand and now I have to figure out how to get it off. If you notice I'm just kind of teasing this around because they'll stick to everything. I want to now take my covering that's on my frame ready to go and we're gonna lower this down. Now the covering is on is attached to this side so we're gonna lower it down so the bare side of the frame is up. Now when I lower this down I'm looking to make sure that I get everything inside the bounds of this frame. So I've got a rib cleared here and here. You notice they're very close together. Now at this point, everything's laying down. You don't try to lift it back up or you'll mess things up. You get one shot at this. Now at this point, things are relatively secured. So I would go around and just kind of touch the film down 
to a few high points like the ribs because those are the things that stick up the highest. Now at this point we can go over and we can start to tick it, stick it down to the spars. Kind of like this. So we're just tamping it down. This requires a little bit of patience. Take your time and you will get it beautifully right. Rush through it and you won't like the results. At this point, now that everything's kind of secured, I can start to rub my finger around here. Don't press down too hard or you'll break the ribs. But I can press the film down on the spars and the ribs. And I'm just on these ribs. You can see the rib flexes a little. I'm just putting enough weight on those ribs to get the film to touch it. I let the adhesive do the rest. I'm going to do the same thing on my stab. Now I'm going to use a razor blade to cut this out. This is where you absolutely must have the sharpest possible razor blade. So a brand new razor blade is essential. Now if you've only been using it for this build so far and haven't gotten any glue on it, you should still be able to use the same razor blade to cut out your film. So there's your wing. Now I'm going to just show you using the cautery so that you see what that's like. Oops. And so that's the result using the cautery. Sometimes you'll have a little melted spot. You can tack any loose edges down. So if you have any edges sticking out like this, you're going to want to come back with a cautery or a razor blade. Just make sure those are melted into the wing. So you don't want any junk sticking out like that. Same thing with our wing. I was able to trim this very close, but if you have any excess, you're going to want to take some sort of sharp razor blade, cautery, or something, and not have any excess film hanging off the edges. Alright, so we have our wing sitting here, and we're going to take our wing tips, which are the smaller parts. So your wing tips go on like so, facing the same direction. So what we're going to do, and this is why having your covering trimmed off close to the edge is important, is we're going to put glue, and it doesn't take much, just a little th very thin bead of glue along here. If you feel like you're using not enough, you're probably using about the right amount. And now I'm going to face this to the front up against the leading edge. Lay it flat, straight down on the table. 
and gently press it in against the wing. Now it is important that the wing tip be facing straight up and down like this. The reason is if it's out, it's going to add to your wingspan and you could get disqualified in competition by having too large of an airplane. Now we're going to repeat the same thing over on the other side and make sure you remember the orientation so that they're on the same way. So there is our wing all set. Now that you have completed cut it, cutting out the um, covering for your tail for your flying surfaces, and we have completed the wings with wing tips, we're going to move on to the horizontal tail. And the horizontal tail is assembled in the same manner as the wing, so you're going to put the tips on. There's no front and back to the horizontal tail, just like the wings, so all you need is to have them aligned with each other. So we'll pop our uh, tail fins out. Now, don't throw this carrier sheet away because we're going to come back to this in just a minute. So what we're going to do is just, uh, just like the wings, we're going to run a bead of glue. Just a thin bead of glue, doesn't need much, on that rib. Now, um, you can, if you like, lay this down and place the uh, tip fin on. The main thing is that you want it straight up and down. Do the same thing over on this side. And I'll show on this one doing it the other way. So there we are. And I'm going to dip just a tiny bit of CA accelerator on this. And there we go. Now at this point we are going to want to attach the carbon fiber tail boom to our uh, horizontal tail and so we're just going to glue it on aligned with the center rib just like that. Now one thing I will mention that can allow you some freedom of adjustment is use a fairly substantial glue joint up front. Just use a small dab of glue back here, and that way, if you find that your airplane's diving a little bit um, because it, it doesn't have enough incidence, you can actually cut this glue joint uh, free and stick uh, a shim of balsa in here and then re-glue re it with that, um, should that be an issue. Uh, for most airplanes, it won't be. However, that uh, just gives the you the opportunity to um, address that. And... I'm going to take a scrap of wood and remove some of the excess glue there. 
And so what we're going to do is just align this tail boom right over that center rib. And you could lay this on some flat surface and weigh it down, um, just being mindful to uh, clear the uh, rudders on either side. Alright, so for your next step, you're going to take your motor stick and pop it out of the sheet. Now it's very important, do not throw this carrier sheet away because your um, the center section of your wing saddle is here and you don't want to lose that. You can smooth the top off a little bit here. Sandpaper might be a better choice. The way this motor stick works is we're going to mount a nose bearing in this flat that actually is angled down very slightly. And then we're going to mount a rear hook into this gusset that's here. And then we were, are, we're going to put a polyamide tubing socket on top of this angled flat right here and that gives you the necessary uh, stab incidents to make the airplane fly in a stable manner. So let's start by putting a nose bearing on. So we'll take out the nose bearing, only the nose, actually let's go ahead and get the um, uh, spider wire out as well. The nose bearing is going to mount onto the bottom of your motor stick in this manner. Now something important to note is there are several styles of nose bearings so every once in a while we have to ship these with one that's just um, straight up and down front and back but the important thing to remember is you've got this v-notch portion right here and that v-notch part always goes at the back you never put that at the front because if you put it at the front this or the slit style, the prop shaft tends to slip out of it and the nose bearing rubs, um, the uh, nose washer rubs wrong, everything just doesn't work well. So you want the part that is just a perfect hole to always be at the front. Now I've also gotten questions, people put them on backwards and, and you know want to pursue getting another nose bearing, uh, which you could do or you could simply cut it off and glue it correctly, which takes less time and less money. So we're going to take some CA glue and we're going to put it on the flat area. Now you could put it on the nose bearing instead, it doesn't really matter. Now I'm going to take a piece of O20 wire that is supplied in the kit and we're going to thread that through the nose bearing. So we're just sliding it straight through. And we're going to use this as a guide in lining up this nose bearing. So if I glue this on, I'm not concerned about it rocking back and forth this way, but what I am concerned about is making sure it is angled off slightly to the left, just like that. So you can see it is angled off this direction. You only need about three degrees of left offset usually, but you need some. Um, more than five degrees usually is an indication that there's a trim issue elsewhere in your plane. Uh, or if, if you're flying in a really tight uh, flying site like a living room, that might also be useful. But the, the bottom line is about three to five degrees is where you want to be. Any less in the airplane doesn't turn well anymore and you're losing efficiency. Now at this point, we're gonna take some of our spider wire which I have carefully managed to tie a knot into. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the end of it. We're going to use this to wrap around this nose bearing. 
And it's very important that you do this wrapping because the most heavily loaded component in your airplane is, in fact, this nose bearing. And you don't want it to come loose and you don't want it to move around so that you lose those thrust line offsets. Look at me being clumsy with it. It doesn't take too many wraps, but it does take a few, and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Normally this is very easy. And at this point, we're going to smear glue all over the whole thing. absence of a paper towel. I'm just going to wipe it all. The main goal is to rub the glue into the spider wire as much as you can. And then it should stay. So there is the uh, nose bearing installed on the airplane very securely. Now, coming to the back of the motor stick, we're going to insert the um, rear hook assembly, which is literally, it's just a piece of this wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to press it in at about this angle, right up there at the apex of that hook. Just like that, and we'll pull it back out. squirt glue in that area and then that will allow us when we press this back in to get that glue to go down in there and then we're going to take a pair of pliers or sorry wire cutters and we'll cut this about that long just like so you can if you wish take pliers and then this back at an angle like that just provides a little more uh, resistance to the rubber band falling off the end. Um, after you put your polyamide tubing on here, you'll go ahead and wrap this up. Alright, so to put your polyamide tubing on, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this piece of polyamide tubing roughly to size. And then put some glue right across this area. Now if you have an airplane that you know you're going to need some substantial um, rudder trim in it, you may want to offset this tubing to one side. So like if I'm on a typical rubber model, I want to offset it to the left so you would angle it this way. And that would give you some left rudder right out of the box. I am lining this one up straight because the airplane that this is going on is going to probably, I'm probably going to want it to turn a little bit on the wider side. Now, in the process of sliding your tail boom in and out, you're going to set it up for a fairly tight fit, and that's going to stress the glue joint here fairly strongly. So, this is why we need to wrap it with some spider wire. And at the same time, you will do wrapping of your rear hook. So we're going to wrap around that, come up here, just kind of tie it all in together. And then we'll spiral wrap on down here. And there's your completed rear end assembly. The next thing we want to do is make sure that the uh, is set up the tail to fit into our motor stick. Now, if you notice, 
this does not fit tightly. So at this point, uh, sometimes the end will be a little bit flared out on these and we don't want that. We want it rounded off. So I'm gonna use some sandpaper to just round off that part. Now, remember I told you on these, um, the carrier sheets for our tip fins, um, not to throw them away. Cut off a little strip of wood, kind of like this. Um, doesn't have to be exact. Uh, it's better if it's fairly straight, though. And what I'm going to do is smear glue on here. And then I'm going to glue that piece on like that. Now, it's very important that you smother this with CA Accelerator, and the reason is we don't want any wet glue because we're about to insert this into that tail mount and we don't want to risk getting any wet glue in there. So I may want to pinch the end a little bit just to flatten it down. And now this fit should fit fairly snugly in there. Now I'm noticing it's rocking around a little bit. It fits snugly but it's still wanting to turn. You can increase the friction that it exerts by smearing some glue on uh, on top of that wood and then come back again with CA Accelerator. Make sure it's fully hardened. We should mention this glue does not uh, dry, it hardens. And now you can actually hear it clicking as you turn it, so it's staying put. And there we go. Now, at this point, go ahead and pop your tail boom loose and proceed on to the next step. If you have not already, go ahead and slip two rubber bands onto your motor stick. We'll just put, place them loosely like that. Now, on the carrier sheet for your motor stick, you have this little wing saddle part. And be careful, this is a little on the fragile side. Now, get the plywood upright parts, and we'll go ahead and break one of these out. You may need to use a razor blade to help free these up a little bit. Um, the plywood is fairly hard and so the tabs on these don't let go quite as easily as some of the other materials. Now what I'm going to do, uh, let me show you before I, um, you're going to glue these on like this. And like this. Okay. And what we're going to do, just making sure those are the same length. Okay. Um, we're going to put glue around like so. And slide this on this wing post. And now, while it is in place, Hit it with a little bit of CA glue. Now, when we put this rear post on, or front, which, it, well, the other wing post, what we want to do, we do want to make sure it's straight up and down. Um, 
this way, but most importantly, we want to make sure it's lined up in this direction. Now, with this wing post assembly or wing mount assembly put together, we're going to slide it onto the motor stick and then we can pull the rubber bands up front and back and it's mounted in place. Next thing we want to do is we're going to mount our wings on here. Now, it is important to note, if you're building this airplane as a monoplane, you're going to want to go ahead and snip these posts here so you just use this lower wing mount. Um, leave enough of the posts sticking up that you have this arrangement right here so that the, the posts are um, have that center part sticking up to notch into the root of the wing. Also, make sure you're there for a moment, my wing posts weren't uh, seating correctly. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and glue this lower wing in place. And so I'm pinching it fore and aft. The main thing is I want to look down this wing and I want to make sure that it's flat all the way across. If anything, I want this leading edge here to be slightly higher than the trailing edge on this, the left wing. So this type of warp in a small, at a smaller scale is okay. This is not okay. Your plane will not fly if you do that. And mine is pretty much perfectly, oh, I've got a little bit of twist this direction, which like I said, that's a good thing. Is we're going to circle this airplane to the left, and that'll hold that wing up so that the airplane won't crash. Now, assuming that we're going to build, that you're building a biplane, this is the point where you put that upper wing on, this will be a time now if you're building a model, monoplane to just snip those, uh, the excess off of your wing posts. What you want to do is try to make sure the upper and lower wings are parallel without gluing themselves to yourself too much. Just like that. Now, this one is not seating in quite all the way. Yeah, there we go. Just like that. And I'm going to hit this with a, actually, don't want to squirt on the covering as much as possible because CA Accelerator does dissolve the adhesive used to cover your airplane or to attach the covering to your airplane. And there we go. So for our next step, we're going to install the propeller assembly. Now, what I want to mention is these are the propellers we currently have. Uh, we have a short run of these. Pretty soon we're going to have um, the standard size propellers. And the standard size propellers are built to a, a much larger size than is allowed by the rules, which is uh, okay because they provide very wide blades. The disadvantage is that means you have to trim them to size. So. Um, the propeller in English units, the maximum propeller diameter works out to about 6.65 inches. Uh, that means that 6 and 5 eighths, which is 6.625 inches, is a very safe number. Now this propeller, of course, is right at 6 inches, so it's not a problem. But if you were to, uh, if you have the standard size propeller, you're going to need to cut it down. So what you would want to do is set your ruler 
at the apex of the, the uh, axis of the propeller and measure out the desired radius. And you would take scissors and, and make the cut. So half of 6.625 inches, 6 and 3 eighths, is 6 and 3 sixteenths inches, which is this mark right here. So what you would want to do with your propeller is take a pin with the propeller in this position, take a pin and make a mark right there, and then you would bring scissors in wherever that mark is, and you would gently and carefully snip around um, and ideally get a nice rounded edge on both sides of the propeller. It's very important that you do that, otherwise you will be disqualified from competition. As I said, this propeller is only six inches, so it's under the, the um, uh, maximum, so we just leave it as it is. Now, the next thing that you will need to do is get one of your propeller shafts out and then track down those little bitty Teflon washers. And you will want two of them. If you can Let's see, I've got glue all over most of my fingers. The oil in your finger will sometimes let you get one of these. And then you can take the propeller shaft and start to thread it on, maybe. Sometimes press it against the table. And there we go. So the Teflon washer is on the propeller shaft. Ideally, since you have enough uh, to do this, get two of them. So let me find a second one. And so now we have two. Slide your propeller shaft into your propeller. Should be a, it'll be a somewhat tight fit, not too bad. Now, what we want to do is we want to set this propeller shaft up so that we have a little bit of excess out the back of our, um, our propeller bearing, but not too much. So about that much right there. Then what we're going to do is take a pair of needle nose pliers We'll grab right there, slide the propeller back. That's marking where we're going to bend the, uh, the shaft. Stick your thumbnail here, or your thumb, and you're going to want to press across. You don't want to press out here and bend it because you'll bend your propeller shaft and make it unusable. So what I want to do is I want to press right here, and it takes some amount of force. So it may hurt a little bit if, you, if you're pressing enough to bend it. That's okay. It will not hurt you. Um, may feel a little uncomfortable for a minute, but then you'll get that nice bend. Now we're going to take our um, wire cutters and we'll snip the excess off so that I'm left with that amount of propeller shaft. At this point, I can slide everything up front leaving my propeller shaft like this. And then you're gonna thread your propeller shaft into the nose bearing. Now the first time you thread this shaft into the nose bearing, it's gonna be a little bit tight. So what I'm doing is I'm simply wiggling it carefully through each of these bends of this propeller shaft. And like I said, the first time it's tight, second time not so much. Now what you want to do to get this to snap into the back is arrange the propeller shaft so that you catch this bend in it. So if you try to do it the other way, it's not going to go in. Slide it until it fits down like that, and then if you carefully press in, you'll hear that click. Now the prop shaft is in. And again, that also will become looser in time to the point that you'll have to check uh, before each flight to make sure that it's securely in place. Now our prop shaft is in place. Now check the center of gravity of your airplane 
by balancing it on two fingers like this. And we're showing a little bit tail heavy, which is to be expected with this propeller. And so we're still balancing pretty far aft. That's okay, because at this point now, most of my rubber motor will be ahead of my center of gravity. And so it'll slide the CG a little bit forward. The reason we're doing this is to get an approximate wing position because what we're going to do now is we're going to attach landing gear to this airplane. So the first thing I recommend that you do is take a piece of this polyamide tubing and get a piece of this uh, the 332nd strip that was included in your kit. You can take sandpaper or a razor blade and start trimming down the um, end of this stick a little bit. So like I said, this is one way to do this. Another is to take a piece of sandpaper and kind of sand it around. And you'll have to sand, sand it down a fair bit. We want it to be round and um, kind of shrunken down a little bit because we want it to fit under the end of this tube, just like this. Now, the purpose of this is a removable mount for your landing gear on the fuselage. You may choose to glue your landing gear directly to the fuselage, but I like the removable landing gear because it allows you to fit um, more airplane into a given size box. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slide this tubing back off and we want it fairly far back. We want it ahead of the center of gravity. We know the center of gravity is somewhere back here right now. It's going to come forward with the rubber motor which means somewhere around right here is where I can put the landing gear because I don't want the landing gear too far forward. And so I'm going to take this piece of tubing and I'm going to glue it right here on the side of the motor stick. And we want to glue this on straight up and down as we can get it. Mine's a little crooked, shouldn't be too bad of a problem. And put a little bit of glue here on either side so that this does not break off easily. Now, take this end of this stick that you have cut out and cut it to a length of four inches long. Now cut another piece to the same length. Go over to your wing spar sheet at this point, and these little triangles, these are what are called gussets. Cut out two of them. Now find the center of this stick, which is at the two inch mark. dab of glue on here and the non-sanded end goes out. We're going to take just the regular end and we're going to glue it on just like ooh, making a mess. Just like that. And ideally use something to guide you into having a squared off edge like that so that it's straight up and down. Now, this joint is very fragile, so you're going to want to do something to reinforce it. And that's where the little gussets come into play. Stick one 
on one side. One on the other side. Just like that. Come back to your spar sheet here and remove two of these wheels. They'll have little holes in the middle. It may or may not need a little bit of cleaning out. Now, oh, find your hardware bag and take this piece of aluminum tubing and get a piece of sandpaper again. Round off the end of it, just like that. Now, this is going to ruin your razor blade, so bear that in mind. We're going to take this razor blade and we are going to roll it back and forth on the end. And we're cutting a piece that's around an eighth of an inch long. Once you have scored that, you can gently just break it right off. If it takes any excess force to, bend, to try to bend it, just go, uh, go back to rolling it under the edge of that razor blade until you get it right. Now we're going to thread this onto this piece of wire. Now this step is very critical because if you get glue on the inside of that um, this axle you're going to have to start all over because your wheels won't roll freely. I just want a tiny little bit of glue on the outside of that piece of aluminum tubing. Now I'm going to use my fingernail to hold it back while I gently slide it into the hole on my wheel. Spin the wheel to make sure that it's free. You may have to rotate it around a little bit. Now you can pull it off and hit it with super glue. Or sorry, accelerator. Now we're going to do the same thing again. So we have to sand off that rough edge again. And the reason is that rough edge. Uh, prevents us from being able to slide it into the wheel very well. And so I'm going to repeat this procedure. Put a score line on there. And off it comes. Slide it onto our piece of wire. Glue. Again, keeping the glue cautiously there on the outside. Slide the wheel on. It's rolling about right, maybe a little bit there. Now it's fairly straight. Pull it off. Hit it with accelerator. Now, for the next step, we're going to make the axles for the wheels. So we're going to grab just this tiny little bit of the end of the wire, just like that. We're going to bend it over. Now if you notice, you see how my knuckles are white? I'm squeezing this pair of pliers very hard in order to be able to get this sharp bend. Slide this onto a wheel, just like that. And what we're going to want to do is leave about that much, that's probably half of an inch. You don't really need that much, but what I'm going to do now, when you do this, grab this piece of wire here. Also, press your finger against this because it's about to fall off, just like that. If you don't, that piece is going to go flying across the room and you get to start over. Now, take your pair of pliers and hold that assembly so that the free end is sticking out. Our bent end is over here. We are going to carefully 
press this into the end of the wood just like that. The reason you want to be careful is if you slip, you can punch this into your finger. And I had a student who um, punched a piece of wire into her hand doing this, and so I don't recommend that. Um, squirt some glue on that hole that you've just punched into the uh, landing gear leg, and again, slide it on. Now, do not let go of this with the pliers at this time, because if you do, your wheel is going to slide over into that glue, it's going to get into the wheel bearing, and your wheel's not going to turn correctly. So while it's still just sitting there, squirt it with the CA accelerator, and wait a minute, and then you can come back, and that wheel turns freely. So we'll repeat the same procedure again. Clip onto the end of the wire, squeeze hard, press tightly down to get that perfect 90 degree bend. Thread the wheel onto the axle wire. Press my finger over the end. Leave myself that uh, half inch or so extra. Clip. Again, carefully punch the wire in. Notice I hold this up fairly close. If I hold it here, I'm at risk for breaking the piece of wood. Squirt the glue on. Put the wire back in. Accelerator. Wait for a second for the glue to fully harden. And we're good to go. this point we can slide that landing gear on all right so we're going to take some rubber strip here and I recommend taking um, enough to make about a 12 inch loop and this this is to get started once you are familiar you'll be able to um, meter out the length of the rubber a little uh, more easily. Alright, so this is 1.78 grams, so we're going to need to snip some off, but there is a catch, and the catch is the weight of your O-rings in Scioli rules is included in the weight of the rubber motor. So for a lot of contest classes that's not the case, but including the O-rings simplifies uh, check-in process uh, for your planes. Go on there. There we go. So I'm going to slip these on. And now I'm going to start snipping rubber off. We're still at 1.7. 1.67. I need to get access to a little more here. 1.6. One point five three, and we'll snip just a small amount off. One point five two, one point four nine six. All right, so that's about where you want to be, right in the one point four, uh, one point four nine range. Is where you need to be. Now on contest day you are in fact going to need to compare motors and whatnot to verify. Now the next thing that you're going to want to do 
and just lubricate the end of this rubber motor very slightly just a tiny amount Now, if you have a pair of hemostats, which is medical um, pliers, basically, needle nose pliers, uh, that lock, you can use them to hold this knot in place. If not, you need to maneuver it in your hand and put a tiny dab of glue on this knot. And there you go. Now, at this point, you can lubricate the rubber motor. Now, your rubber motor is ready to go. Now, I have used uh, Molly Coat 55 uh, as my lubricant. You need to use a silicon based lubricant, it cannot contain oils uh, other than like castor oil. Uh, but in general, just use silicon based lubricants um, super lube is another brand you can use we have molly coat 111 on the website uh, molly coat uh, 33 is actually the best that we've found um, although super lube is is uh, very similar uh, probably roughly equal store your rubber bands in a dark cool location never let them be in a hot car or in direct sunlight and they will last you a long time all right, this completes the construction of your Tech Flyer 2022. Um, next, we're going to move on to trimming of the airplane. So I've got my rubber motor that we've already shown how to set up. So now we need to proceed on to the flying methods. All right, so the first thing that you want to do once you've got the airplane reasonably well balanced is you're going to start doing test glides. So we want to make sure of a couple things. We want to check the center of gravity of the airplane. It is somewhere around the trailing edge of the wing with a rubber motor installed. And then we want to start looking at some of our other settings, such as is our stab tilted the correct direction. So we want our stab tilted this way, not the other way. You can see I've got a slight amount of static tail tilt. And we may need to adjust our rudders, uh, or sorry, our, our fins to get a left turn going in the glide. But we'll take a look at that in, in a minute. So to do a test glide with this airplane, you don't chuck the airplane around like this. You're going to hold the airplane pointed down about 10 degrees. And we're, gonna, we're not going to throw the airplane up. We're going to throw the airplane down where it's pointing. So you want to make a smooth movement down. So we're just going to slide it into the air. As you can see, the airplane glides away to a nice landing. Now that we have done a test glide, you may need to do multiple test glides. So if the airplane's stalling, you're going to slide the wing further back. If it's diving, try sliding the wing forward. Um, if it's really diving hard, you're going to want to add a shim under the leading edge to raise the leading edge up. So you would stick a scrap of balsa. If I were to take one of these ribs and break it off, I could stick it under here. And so that raises that leading edge and that causes the airplane to pull out of that dive assuming you had that problem. As you notice, I'm not having that problem. There's something to be aware of. So again, you're going to make several test glides to make sure that the airplane's flying well. Next, we're going to add some power. So the way that we want to add power is we want to attach an O-ring to our torque meter or other um, solid surface, load the winder onto the other O-ring, and we'll crank in um, enough turns that we get one row of knots down here. And I'm actually starting to form a little bit of a second row. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the winder out of this hook, or sorry, o-ring. Now when you load this motor on you want to be very careful that you avoid hitting the landing gear. So you have to load the motor from this the right side. Now what I want to do is grab my propeller 
up front like so, so that I capture the end of the propeller shaft. And now my propeller shaft is not moving around, so I can slide the O-ring right in place. Now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to secure this O-ring and slide it free and it will go on the rear hook. Now at this point your thought, uh, because the rules say that the airplane has to take off from its wheels, would be to set the airplane on the, on the floor and let it take off that way. We don't have enough power yet to do that, and it's not going to tell us a whole lot of information. We need to know what the airplane's doing in flight so that we can make the adjustments necessary to get it off the ground. So what I'm going to do is when I launch this airplane, I'm going to let go of the propeller, and I'm just going to slide the airplane smoothly into the air. So I let go of the propeller, and I slide the airplane into the air. And we notice the airplane floats away, doesn't really climb, and don't worry about how it landed. So the thing that we noticed is the airplane took off and kind of came up and then settled. That means that the airplane, much as we saw with that first test glide where it was kind of porpoising a little bit, needs the wing to be slid a little bit further back. All right, so when we got the airplane, tail's all out of whack. So we want to rotate our wing, our tail back into place. So we've got that slight stab tilt. Now we can set the airplane down. And this time we're going to wind a little bit harder. Actually, before that, we forgot we've got to make our adjustment to the wing. So we're going to slide the wing back a little bit further. Now, once you find the wing setting that you like, you're going to want to use a pen to mark on the motor stick where the wing goes. We're sliding the wing back a little bit here. There we go. I've got two full rows of knots and then some down here. So we're starting to come up the torque curve a little bit. I'm showing about 0.3 inch ounces. And again, same procedure as before. And now we're expecting this airplane to track around the left as it always has. I let go of the prop, let go of the plane, and we can see the beginnings of a nice climb turning a little bit tightly. Alright, so we've got the airplane wound back up. Now this time, since the airplane was turning really tightly, we're going to set that to about zero stab tilt. We may end up needing to take out a little bit of the left thrust if it's turning really tightly to the left. Um, may not be a, a problem. Some places that's beneficial, but the big thing is if you turn too tightly, the airplane will fly through its own, own wake on the way down. And you'll see it dip a wing and lose a bunch of height from that. So since the airplane was circling really tightly, we're going to launch over this way. We can see that the airplane climbs away and it's flying rather well. All right, now I noticed the airplane was fly still flying very nose high, so I'm gonna slide my wing back just a little bit more yet. Just like that. All right, so now I'll go in here, launch the airplane, and we see a nice climb right up there into my lamp, and in general, that's flying remarkably well. Now, something important to notice, if you noticed as the airplane was flying along, along right here, it dipped in. That's what I was talking about with the airplane flying through its own wake. So if you have a tight space like this, um, that turn is that really tight turn is beneficial, but in a larger site in a competition environment, you would want to open that turn up. So one way that I would do that is 
to simply take a pair of pliers and uh, bend this propeller shaft to give myself less left thrust and that would help the airplane turn wider. Um, for the next flight we're going to wind up a little more and we'll demonstrate taking off from the ground. We won't be able to get a very good flight from that in here but you'll at least get to see what it's like. Alright, so we have this airplane wound up pretty well. Like I said, this is probably not going to quite work in here. It's going to crash into something, which is okay. Um, we just want to discuss the ROG flight of this airplane, rise off ground. So we've gotten the airplane flying in a stable manner. We know how much power is needed to get it off the ground and flying well. So at this point, I can set this airplane on the ground and we just gently lower it in place. And now what I want to do is is grab again a hold of the airplane and I'm just holding it in, in place and so what I'll do is let go of the propeller and let go of the airplane and the airplane climbs away and then goes and hits things. Alright so one thing that we should note is when the airplane came up off the ground it did kind of hesitate and stall a little bit uh, in a larger room you'll be able to evaluate whether that's a problem because if it doesn't recover from that and settles back onto the ground then in competition the point where the airplane makes contact with the ground uh, the first time after it comes off the ground uh, that's the end of the flight so bounces are not good so if the airplane comes up and stalls and settles back you're going to want to add some down thrust to this nose bearing so what you would do is take this front part and bend it down um, a little bit so that the propeller points down a little and that will cause it to pull down and keep the airplane from stalling as easily other than that, your main thing at that point is to start concentrating on optimizing the flight profile of this airplane. We've got some videos on doing that, so I, I would recommend you look through the rest of our channel for that. Um, other than that, uh, at that point, start enjoying flying your airplane. So now that we have completed the process of trimming the airplane, next we need to talk about storage. So you don't want to just carry your airplane around like this, and indeed the rules specify you should show up with the airplane in a box. So the first thing you want to do is mark where that wing position is going to be. Um, but after that we can start taking this airplane apart. So I slide the wing off, slide the landing gear off if you have made the landing gear removable, and even take the propeller off. We currently sell a box which is suitable for holding these airplanes where you can build your own. Pay attention to the maximum dimensions um, that are allowed. This one fits well within those dimensions. So we're going to slide the wing in, just like so, off to one side. You can stick your motor stick in, stick the landing gear, and then the tail for this particular box would fit in across like so. You could also put the tail in first crosswise and then drop the wing in on top like that. The main thing is to be careful when removing the tail. Sorry, my lid's about to fall off. Um, that it doesn't hang up on removal. And then you can place the lid on top of the box like so. Now, things to notice. I did not put the rubber motor in the box. I did not put my winder in the box and I did not put my torque meter in the box. Do not store your tools with your airplane because your tools will roll around in the box and they'll destroy the airplane that you've spent all your time building. So you need a separate case for those, you need a separate case for your winding rig, etc. Um, if you were to make a model box out of wood, you could mount your torque meter on top of it. However, I recommend mounting your torque meter on a rig on top of your toolbox. We've uh, seen students have success with that where they mount the torque meter and then have an arm that comes out that you can lay the winder into uh, for the loading and unloading of the rubber motor. So that's uh, my recommended strategy on storing and transporting your model. Alright, this completes the build video for the J&H Aerospace Tech Flyer 2022. Hope you've enjoyed the uh, build process for this airplane. Check it out on our website if you haven't already. 
because uh, I know some of you just like to watch our uh, build videos. Uh, but for the rest of you, we hope to see you at Technology Student Association flying events. And the rest of you, we'll see you around the field. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.